it's all frozen. What do you do if you're fascinated by different cultures but can't go travel right now? Asian squad. Russian squad. Meeting and learning from those with various backgrounds will probably be the next best thing. So I'm a Russian now. Oh. Yeah. oh, and finally, I'm not the camp chef this time. Welcome to uh, Overland Lad Adventures. Ah. I'm not cutting that part out. I'm not cutting that part out. Good morning, folks. Happy Sunday. Uh, it's actually not Sunday right now, but I always tend to release my video on Sundays. So if you're new to my channel, hello and welcome. My name is Monique. This is Alta. We explored around Australia for around a year and then now back to Canada exploring our own backyard until the restriction allow us to explore farther away. So today, I'm not sure if you can hear, but it's a little bit of a busy trail, but I am alone right now. I'm go actually going to meet a very special guest. I will reveal his identity later on and maybe have a little vehicle walk around. But for now, um, let's just see if I can reach to him. So he actually uses a different communication device. I use Solio. He has a Garmin inReach, but two devices can communicate with each other because in the end they generally just translate to another number. So all I need to do is put his in-reach number into my Zolio and then message him that I am a trailhead. I will have to correct myself here. My message actually got bounced. Before I got here, he used in-reach to message my phone number and I put that number as my Zolio contact. But in-reach doesn't allow me to start a conversation with this number. Later, we tried to use in-reach to message my Zolio number and it worked from then on. However, on my Zolio app, his number was different from the one I got from text message. Just something tricky to keep in mind. Always have the in-reach to start a conversation first. A bit of a bumpy road. Um, my tailgate actually got shaken off. I set this a little too loose and then a horrid bull tie mount. Bull tie mount came out, so um, I need to tighten that when I get home, but for now, keep some zip ties. Zip tie fix everything. I'm not going to have much technical trail today because both of our tires are almost due. Um, yeah, it's getting a little low on tread. I'm starting to have some fresh snow. I wonder if I need to throw a snow chain on. Still haven't seen that I really needed, needed it. So I'll allow myself to be a little lazy for now. Hey! Wow, what a sight! I've never been here. Good choice. Well, let's see where do I cut. Beautiful lake. Hey, Victor. You're already on the roof. Hello, comrade Manik. Oh, I can't talk in this thing. <laughs> so this is Victor gearing to adventure. I've actually seen uh, a lot of his photos on uh, Facebook. it has been to a lot of places, you know, in BC and Baja and things. A true overlander, I would say. But uh, unfortunately for now, you know, you're not technically not supposed to be overlanding. Uh, one big definition of overlanding is that you are taking on remote travel to areas that have a culture usually different than your home, um, often crossing borders. And as we know, borders are all closed right now. So, however, Victor has a um, Russian heritage. So I guess in a way we are experiencing different culture by meeting different people and see what we can be learning something. How do you actually say hi in Russian? Uh, we plot. Yeah, look at the camera and just say it. We plot. We plot. Perfect. That's a good version of that. We plot. Hello there, comrades. Uh, welcome to uh, Overland Lad Adventures. Uh, and actually, it's Gear Overland <laughs> Adventures. I actually bumped into uh, him once on the road when he's gearing oh. into the city. And my first reaction was just like, wow, this truck is huge. Victor! What she probably thought is. This guy is compensating way too Compens much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's check out his um, setup and see what this this huge monster is all about. What's all the compensation? <laughs> I don't know. You should. Uh, I'm not cutting I that should, part I, out. I, I I'm not cutting that part out. 
We'll do a full walk around on his ram in another video, so this one doesn't get awfully long. There's enough fun time in this episode alone. No one has that attention span nowadays, right? Wow, everything's frozen. <laughs> it's all frozen. This is why you should always dry your awning before storing. It was just too cold, so I wasn't drying it, and then they all freeze. <laughs> the buckle is frozen. <laughs> I don't need to slow, right? Do I? Slow. No, you don't have to do slow. I'm just saying, I'm gonna do slow motion. Okay. I was really trying to pick up the whole forest. Looks like we're building a beaver dam right here. What are you doing sitting like this? Asian squat, man. Well, this is how you rest. You like... Get I was pizza. just gonna say this is a Russian squat. Because that's squat? what we did. Asian yeah. squat! Russian squat! Okay, history lesson. Midna, imagine Russia, country collapsed, Soviet Union collapsed, mid-90s. Me as a teenager, well, in that time frame. Everything's closed on my island specifically, no electricity. Uh, like several oh, you times live on a day. An island? Yes, <laughs> near Japan actually. I'm from near Japan. Oh. So technically, okay. I'm Asian. Asian. Ah. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the typical thing you would see in Russian movies from that era: Adidas clothing, shaven head. You would see like on the porch or somewhere, just kind of sitting, maybe doing sunflower seeds, and just like, <laughs> you know, that that was a thing. You just because there's nothing else to do at home. Yeah. You don't have much electricity going on. Where's that bottle of vodka? That is really, really heavy rock. I can't I can tell. <laughs> so this is going to be interesting because usually I am the one cooking, but today I guess we'll have Victor to cook for me. Still using my grill, my melted Coleman grill. I need a better solution than this. So if you know anything better than this, well, I mean, there's a lot of things better than that, but basically I really do like the configuration where it's one side grill and the other side um, a stove because that's basically the two things I use. So that's why I've been still using this, but I can potentially get a um, just a pot for this, but then, you know, if it's gonna melt again, I'm not sure if I still want to do it. So, see uh, how you perform on this kind of handicap setup. First off, oil the pan. What's <laughs> happening with the oil? It uh, became coconut oil, eh? Yep. It's olive oil? <laughs> yep. Need to put it to the fire briefly, because otherwise I can't cook right now. <laughs> On today's Overland cooking show, we're gonna cook a Brazilian soup. It's a secret recipe, but I'll go through it anyway. Mainly based on the tomato paste. There's gonna be some coconut milk. I'm actually gonna spice it up with Korean spices and a little bit of Russian influence with the dill. Fusion. Fusion, fusion, yeah. The dill here. So parsley, onions, a little bit of carrots, a little bit of jalapeno peppers, red peppers, garlic butter. Brazilian of shrimps, crush some garlic here and chop the onion. Solidified olive oil. Yeah, yeah, no. And this is done, we're gonna chop very finely our jalapeno peppers. So on this heat, yeah, we're gonna do it for about five minutes. Just need to keep stirring it, just so it gets kind of soft. All this. Oh, that does, and we just started. <laughs> okay, carrots in. Good enough. We're gonna put some rice in here. Do a little bit of water here. Yeah. Tomato goes in now. There is no butter in this recipe, but it's a garlic butter, so you can't go wrong with that. Alright, so that's been about 20 minutes. Yeah. Gonna finish up with some coconut oil. And uh, salt, pepper and some Italian herbs. That's not in the recipe, that's just my mix. Now the, the crown jewel of this whole thing. Okay, all the garnishes. Oh, this is gonna be good. And now let's squeeze some lemon. Nice juicy squeeze. It's 
it must be that Korean pepper, which uh, kimchi pepper. Giving it a kick. Wow. Really, it's more like on the Caribbean side Caribbean. recipe originally. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, stew, fish stew sort of thing. Yeah. yeah wow. Thank you, right, chef. That's it. What a wonderful morning. Drive out of water. Uh, it actually got quite busy here. We got quite a few other campers around. Yeah. Popular beach. Can't believe it's my first time. You know how to pop it? You're supposed to go like shake, 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 shake. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the new beginnings. Do you have this tendency that when you meet someone interesting, you try to get to know them by going through their whole social media feed? I don't even remember what I've posted in the past, but somehow Victor found a video clip on my account which gave him an idea, a surprise. I get to play the piano in the wild. Plug the keyboard to my Gold Zero power station, let my rusty fingers run through the black and white keys. Want to hear what I played? You'll need to check out his video. Since Victor laid down the kitchen walk last night, today is my turn to be the nutritionist. I prefer a simple but well-seasoned meal with identifiable protein and veggie plating, mainly from a habit of tracking calories when everything is easier to gauge. How spicy can you eat? Well, basically you saw yesterday, uh, I, I had burning lips from whatever I concocted. Right. Try this! Apparently it's from California and then a uh, small batch. No additive and more so on the savory side because it's like an Asian blend. I'll just put it a little bit on the side so you don't die. Because <laughs> I've tried it, it's pretty spicy. All right, I'm gonna go sip at the fire. How's the spice? Spicy? Um, this spice is actually pretty awesome. Like it has a slow build up. In the <laughs> beginning, it's like, it has uh, many oh. flavors. And then after about 10 minutes, the lips start to burn. <laughs> but the shrimps and salmon you did is just like, oh my god. Restaurant food right here, like five, nah. five stars, five times. More snow came down the campsite every night. I'm loving this reflector setup more and more. Not only for staying warm with blocking sun, but also the vibe as if opening a curtain, taking my first peek into the world outside. So refreshing. All the other campers had already left. Maybe it's time to dust off my awning, take off the spiderweb guy robes, pack up and hit the road. It's pretty amazing to think back on all the people I've met along the way. Journeys like this bring people together as we learn from each other's stories. Though remote traveling may seem like a pretty standard activity, each person's experience is unique. Because of the different ways we grew up, how we process information, how we manage situations, how we express ourselves. So many factors. You're just meeting the Soviet star. <laughs> so I'm a Russian now. Oh. Yeah. Canada, on the other hand, as an open and welcoming country, well, at least before the global restriction, fortunately enjoys the multicultural diversity. Yes, Pan America trip will be nice, Eurasia trip will be nice. But with the current restriction, even visiting the next district is discouraged. Who knows when we get to fulfill those trips. But for now, as night falls, flipping through the campfire with my poking stick, listen to the stories I missed in history class about the Soviet Union, learning a few phrases in foreign language, <laughs> I'm content. What about you? Met anyone new and learned a story or two? Please tell. Uh, not right. <laughs> no, 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 no. Content. You just go 